Welcome to Vintage Coin App Restorations and one of our latest projects. Here we have something really, really special, uh, a flying saucer, but not just any flying saucer. Uh, this was uh, a film prop made for the Dick Van Dyke Show in the year 1965 for an ep episode called Uni Ufits. Um, if you look it up online, um, you can find it on uh, YouTube. And it's an episode where Dick, Dick Van Dyke is in his office and he, uh, in the corner of his eye, I guess he sees a flying saucer flying in the, outside the window. And he gets on the window and he sees the flying saucer and he hears this strange noise, you know, and he, he can't quite make it out, but Uni Ufits is what he thinks he hears. So the show goes on uh, about, you know, what he saw. And in the end, it becomes a... Um, a uh, I, I guess he sounds like more of a German scientist and um, not a scientist, but it turns out to be a toy maker. And he is going to revolutionize the toy industry with this flying, remote controlled flying saucer. And uh, he's trying to keep it a secret for uh, right before Christmas. And uh, his partner, um, who has helping him build his flying saucers in charge of uh, uh, the audio. And the audio becomes Uni Ufits, which was supposed to mean Merry Christmas. So it's a very funny episode. And uh, you can tell that uh, um, th they made this right there in, in Hollywood uh, in their prop shop. They needed a flying saucer, and this is what they came with. Um, is completely made out of fiberglass. Uh, there is some wood, and uh, you'll see that around the edge here. But what we're looking at is not what it originally looked like in the TV show. Um, we did a little investigation, and we can see some uh, 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 traces of what it was. Um, originally, it was painted copper, and you can see that right there. It was a metallic copper, and... Uh, also, these little black circles did uh, not exist. Uh, someone added those after a while. But if you look really close, as I turn this piece here, you could see the tracing of a large window. And I come around again, you could see the tracing of another window and a small circle here and another large window. So we pretty much know that um, there were some painted windows on there. And I know that just because if you watch the episode, you can see in a couple of still shots of it that this thing was um, had windows in it. But the one thing we don't know was exactly what color it was because it's, um, the show was uh, filmed in black and white. But just because of the colors, as you can see here, if, you, if I zoom in close, you can see over time somebody scratched it or just um, a movement of this product. And you can see that we have a little red coming through here. So now we know that the outside of the saucer was painted gold and it was painted gold all the way up to right here where you can see an object line where the color changed from red to red and then outside here somebody like hand brushed these windows and i believe they were in a in a i think it's white because on the black and white what's white turns black i think uh, i need to verify that but um you can tell that there was a painted trim around the window and the window also was a different color. Uh, and I can tell you that, that it was painted silver. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But basically this uh, flying saucer was used in the TV show and here it is. It's kind of crude. Uh, you can see a lot of the, the drip marks of either it's going to be either the copper paint or the actual fiberglass, which I think that's uh, where, what it was. And so if you come even close, we did want to do a little investigation to verify some things. And here, if you look really close, you do see a white, uh, a white trim ring. So this would have been all red around it. 
white around the white around the window and the window would have been silver which here you can see a little bit of the clear fiberglass because i kind of cleaned it up and uh, i think we just kind of brushed off that silver a little too much but not only did we have that we can also tell that around the top of this around the top of the red you have a white band and from the white band it goes into clear and over time it has uh oxidized but it would have been more clear um, uh, as you as you see um, we also see there's been damage over the years and you can see you can stick your my stick right through there and you can see the remnants of the fiberglass mesh cloth in there so we got some of that to repair and also all around this unit uh, there is a wood ring and the wood ring is the support for the top and bottom and there might have been screws that went right through there because i can i can see them every so often a perfect screw hole and we'll have to line those up but you can see the damage of this thing for over the years you know here we have a, a full crack and it looks like somebody tried to tape it <laughs> to you know keep it together and I, we're glad that they did but here's a perfect spot where you can see the gold paint and here, they, you can tell that they never gel coated over this because you can actually see the fibers coming out. And we actually have here, looks like a, oh, it's literally probably one of the hanging, um, hanging supports that they use for filming the show. So that's what we have it in the silver, or the way it is now. Uh, doing a little research about it. Um, you know where had it, where where did what happened to it after it was used in that one episode? So doing a little research on it, I found that it's very possible that it was um, used in the 1978 uh, to 1979 Jack Webb TV series called Project UFO, and they might have used it in maybe an episode of something flying. And uh, you literally have to watch all those episodes to find out which one it is. Uh, and uh, that's going to be my next little project in my free time. And uh, we're going to see if, uh, you know, uh, which series that one is in. Uh, because at that time, someone changed it with these little windows, a little black, uh, they're like little fuzzy dots at that time that they put in here. And they quickly painted it over silver. Now, another detail that we can see also is if I flip this thing on its belly, you can see that these are right there. Those are glass um, bicycle reflectors. Uh, and I know that just because I've restored some bikes and that is a real glass reflector. And that one's yellow, as you can see. Here we go again. Those are yellow glass uh, reflectors with uh, like a chrome trim ring around it. And another part of the video on uh, the Dick Van Dyke show, you also see a, a, a lightning bolt profile and if you look really close if I could zoom yeah there you go you can see the Z there's your lightning bolt and I think there were two of them in there because uh, as you see it uh, watching it you can see it um, oh there in fact there, there's something right there too I can see so you know there's there's some lightning bolts that have to be put on here and you can see that the gold paint again is also on the bottom of this piece and Separating the two gold pieces is going to be that piece of wood that holds them together that also at one time was completed, painted the same red that should be up here. Now, when we got this, it came with a cord. I know for a fact that in the TV show, let me pull this cord out. In the TV show, uh, it was not lit up, but it is now. Uh, with this cord so we're not sure maybe someone put it in there just as a prop somewhere down the line might have been hanging on someone's ceiling but here we're going to open this whole unit up okay so now it's very obvious that through the clear gel fiberglass we know that it was a metallic gold and that the other part was red and it went 
to the edge here, just like that object line that we saw. And that the window was silver with a white trim ring around it. And that's just by seeing right through the, the backside of the fiberglass. And the bottom also was done in a uh, metallic gold. These here, however, have all been pulled away. And that is because at one time this thing was suspended. And over time, it must have got brittle. And as you can see, it is just kind of falling apart. So this we need to repair, get it structurally sound again and uh, respray with the gold. And the same thing over here. These rods are where they probably, uh, see like here, that one little object uh, hook that we found, it is actually what they use to support it. So that, sh that little knot that we see there went through the face where they actually secured it to a string to make it spin or something. And here, all these things need to be just re-secured because this one's like completely coming off. How we're gonna display it, uh, we're not totally sure yet. Uh, whether these lights were original or not, we do not know, but it definitely adds a little uh, cool quali quality to it and I will uh, light it up. And you can see that this is, was a, you know, these TV shows when they made them, you know, they were just regular guys, uh, prop guys that were making stuff all the time. So if someone told them to make a, a flying saucer, that's exactly what they did the best they could. And you could see some of this this crazy electrical work. Here you got a, somebody found a plug, taped it with a wire, taped it again. You know, could this be a, all original? It's possible. I mean, it was never about you know, making things perfect. It was, you know, more of an illusion because, you know, the, in the TV show, it just showed very, very briefly. And uh, you didn't need anything with too much detail just to get the, the whole overall feeling of what the show was about. So here, you know, you have a you know, just piece of tape, you know, something needed to be uh, put together. So, you know, they just hold it with what they can. Uh, funny thing here, I'm looking at here, I can see it reverse imprint of some uh, newspaper. So, and I come around here, you can see it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Pretty neat. Uh, some of the things that, the, you know, if I were trying to make this uh, piece and uh, you didn't want to make it out of paper mache, um, which is, you know, they use uh, glue and uh, mixed with plaster of Paris and newspaper and strips. This might have been uh, the base, or they might have made this whole thing out of paper mache and then gel coated over it. And so that's maybe why we have these newspaper thing, because that's what we use. You use newspaper as your uh, your substrate to, uh, to mix all this stuff. And then on the top here, it's very possible this might have been a balloon that you gel coat over it. And when you're done, you pop the balloon and you, you have that perfect uh, cylindrical uh, lid. So. Let's put this back on. I'll try to do this with one hand. And I am going to put the phone down for a second while I plug this thing in. All right, well, take a look at it. So it definitely has this cool, eerie, well, because we have a red LED bulb in there right now. Uh, it could be a flashing bulb, and you know, there's a yellow one in there too. So it has a lot of uh, possibilities to bringing this thing back to life. And you can see some of the, the paint coming through there. So if they wanted it to be lit up, we have to make sure that the paint that we use here is opaque and the light will not come through uh, through the, the red that we wanted it, but only through the top. So there you have it. What an interesting piece. Uh, should be a fun project once we decide which way to go with it. And uh, it couldn't be in better company here with uh, these two uh, spaceship kitty rides. Well, there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can see all the new machines come to the warehouse. Thanks for watching.